He does a radio show in Brisbane at Triple M. A man's radio show talking about man's things. Greg, welcome back. What have you been up to? Uh, yes, lost all my money. Have not won any money on... Uh, I've been good to the bookmakers, let's put it that way. Big racing week here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're lucky to beat Japan and we're lucky to beat Scotland and Oh, how many World Cups are there around the place? Well, that's the thing, mate. I mean, and this is the whole thing. I mean, so tell me that uh, when you go and spend money uh, down at the betting agency, do you tell Mrs. Mato what you spend? No, uh, because that's the beauty of cash. Are they trying to stamp cash out in New Zealand? Oh, God, yeah, mate, absolutely. I mean, please, I mean, you know, I mean, a man needs cash. A man doesn't feel like a man if he doesn't have cash on board, right? Thank you. I love you. As a carpenter, uh, cash is king. Um, but they're treating us like bikies. This is if we're trying to launder money. We're not trying to hide it from them. We're trying to hide it from our wives. It's it. You know, the whole... Po- I mean, Lord... And there's... I mean, this is the whole thing about this new generation, Greg. You know, my old man once for Christmas, and I can't remember how old we were. I think we were just in our teens. But, you know, he went overboard, and he went to the bank, and he got $101 notes in an absolute numerical order. And he fastened, you know, a thing around him like Al Capone would have done. And he presented... <laughs> it's the greatest present you can give someone is a pile of cash. Exactly, exactly. Anyone listening who's in the building industry would understand. I, I would hope there's still cash jobs around. That's why I steered my son into the trade. That's it, mate. Absolutely all right. Just leave the envelope. I mean, hey, but, but it's not just that. I'm sorry. During the rugby league era, the brown paper bag. Do you know? Do you know? And and let's not forget when rugby was amateur, like it was when you played. There was a fair bit of that as well. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm sorry. What the hell are you talking about? Sorry. That's right. That 1991 World Cup where Bob Dwyer decided to leave you at home. Remember that Anthony Herbert was saying that they actually ended up taking about three quarters of a million pounds in a big bag down on the train, mate. All right. But I'll tell you, the year before in 1990, we toured New Zealand. If you weren't playing, you know, the midweek game, whatever, you'd stand out the front of the the, um, stadium selling T-shirts. That's it. It changed pretty quickly when we got our hands on those World Cup final tickets. That's for sure. Nineteen eighty nine. When did you did you participate in the ANZAC fifteen? Because mate, I just think this is just an absolute load of pony. I mean, look, you know, rugby's got too many meaningless matches as it is. If you're going to have the Lions there, I mean, why wouldn't you give them a test against one of the Pacific Islands or something? Who? I mean, is anyone really going to put their body on the line for this? No, they're not. And I remember that there was only three um, three All Blacks who said yes. I think it was. John Timu, and I ended up, that was my first, there you go, that was my first game of footy, I commentated, because John Timu said yes, I think Frank Bunce might have, there was three of you, said three All Blacks said yes, and I ended up not playing in that game, so I commentated, so it was actually good for me, but it was a rubbish game, no one gave a stuff, not the Australians, not the three All Blacks, and not the uh, British Lions, they'd been drinking all week. It's so a- wait, oh, anyway. Look, it's farcical, isn't it? And say say it out loud to all the listeners, mate. It's an absolute farce. I mean, this is what Silver Lake is going to do to New Zealand rugby. The All Blacks are going to just turn into a clown act that gets trotted around the world. They'll play a match in Dubai, and then the All Blacks 15 will be playing over in the United States against the LA Kings. And I just stop it, mate. (sighs) Yep. Yep. Money kills everything, mate, but it's good for the participants. You know. All right, Greg Martin is with us. Speaking of rugby, Wallabies versus France, Dave Rennie says they're the best team in the world. Come on, Dave, we know what you're doing, mate. But, I mean, really, are, are they that much better than you? I would say, yeah, mate. Well, what we saw this year, they were. They were pretty good, but they haven't played a test for a while. So yeah. we, should, we, should be, we should have got rid of all that clunking nonsense last weekend against Scotland. I don't know if you saw the end of that. Do you realise he had a 35 metre in front penalty and that's the only reason we beat Scotland? We're now happy with Scotland in the same way that you're happy beating Japan. Good yes, on you. Well, yes, that's it. We'll take oh, it. No. Yeah. Oh, no, that wasn't our A team. I mean, done. you know, and also I love the fact that, oh, oh. oh, we make these excuses. Oh, we're rusty. You're professional. You've had five weeks to prepare. I'm sorry. What the hell have you been doing for five weeks? Can I raise another thing, Martin? Oh. Because we've sent so many, you, you guys even more so than us, we've sent so many of our young up-and-coming coaches are coaching all around the world, as you, you're aware. Now all the other countries are as good as us. We, we're getting what we deserve. Bingo. We, we've, taught them, we've taught them all your methods to start, added a little bit of Aussie methods, and now all these teams are better than us. It's, <laughs> it's stupidity. Greg Martin, Triple M out of Brisbane. They do a man's show. They talk about men's stuff. 
<sighs> Tell me that no one in Australia after tonight is going to care about the T20 World Cup when you guys aren't in the semis. <laughs> there, there could be a miracle, mate. There could be a miracle. If we can beat... Well, I tried to work out the equation. I think we've got to beat Afghanistan, and they're dangerous. They've got to beat Afghanistan by more than 80 and hope that England don't go very well against Sri Lanka. Uh, you guys creamed us last week. We don't deserve to be in it. You know why? Why? We, we've lost our mongrel. You know, remember how nasty we used to yes. be in Australian cricket? Yeah, well, that's why we, that's why we hate us so much. But I oh, know that's right. You've got to stop the sledging, and you've got to be nice to everybody. And you guys are good at that. You guys are good at being nice and apologising and you can still play good cricket. We need the nasty edge and we're not, we don't have it anymore because we're woke. That's it. And we care about where, where power's made and everything else. We, uh, that guy Pat Cummins, I used to love Cummins, it when mate. people hated it. That guy Pat yeah. Cummins. I mean, please, mate. I mean, get your hand off it. Who's he trying to kid? Mm, exactly. Well, mm. well, Dave Warner should be captain and then we'd be mongrels again and we'd start winning. And we That's like it when you like that because we don't want to like you. We don't want you to be nice. That's right. That's when sports goods. When teams hate each other. That's yes. when sports at its best. Yeah, Rugby oh, League God. World Cup, mate. Is this yours to lose? Because we got Fiji this weekend and a collision course with those kangaroos in the semi coming. Mm, we've got Lebanon, Michael Checker. What about Michael Checker's weekend? You said you spoke to him last, was it last week or week before? No, we tried to, but yeah, he's actually yeah. been a little evasive. But I, I love the fact. So he's actually he's, he's he's coaching Lebanon, and then he and then he jumps on Argentina. Yeah, but the problem is, did you see the Lebanon? What are they? The Cedars. Their team um, team room got burgled, and he lost his laptops. He had one laptop for his Lebanon coaching, and one laptop for his Argentina, because of course Argentina are playing. England this weekend. He's got two games. He's got no laptop. What would you do? What, what can you possibly do without your laptop? So, I don't know. He's got a big weekend. Well, you coach. Yeah, you you just do what you do. I mean, you didn't have it. Yep. I don't That's think. Right. What did Bob Dwyer say? Get the ball, face that direction, get it down that end. Did any of the great all black coaches, did they have laptops with stats all over them and data analysis? No. Hit people. That's it. Knock them over. Get more points, as Sean Fitzpatrick used to do. Look at the scoreboard. Dude, he's got another three. Yeah, and we'll go down there and get another three. Oh, yeah, before you know it, it's 15 nil, naughty night. That was the old days, but now you've got to have your laptop to tell people what to do. Uh, mate, well, weekend, we go. Uh, the Rugby League World Cup hasn't started yet. It starts next weekend. You see the Rugby League Women's World Cup started, though. Yes, the yes. The Brazilians, the new team, the Brazilians, have you seen... Yeah, well, I mean, you know, but that's the thing. I mean, obviously, you know, we've obviously that we don't, you know, because we don't, that's the thing. No, nothing says rugby league like Brazilian women. That's, to me, oh, to me as boys. soon as I saw that, I just said, the game oh. is growing in the right <laughs> direction, Greg. This is what the sport needs, I said. I said that. Yes, well, we last Ruins World Cup, Russia was in. We don't need any Russia in there. We need Brazilians and we need people dancing and twerking. That's what rugby league's lacked for quite some time. It's enough twerking. And that's what the Brazilians will bring. On a serious note, though, when Jared Wa- yeah. Warrior Hargraves goes out there with an axe handle in his hand and tries to take a guy's head off, he gets one week. And when Brody Retallick trips, genuinely falls, ends yeah. up uh, out of position and body shape, and ends up, he gets two weeks. What about that? Well, that'll answer the question. If you, if you know, people always say to me, oh, I don't, I don't understand rugby. What's the difference between rugby league and rugby union? You just show them that and go, rugby league still fair income. Rugby union think the referees are the most important thing in the game, and that's the difference between the two games. The women's rugby world cup. Now, just in case you didn't realise, yeah, no, I'm just you. You lost to England last week, okay? Don't care. Yeah, don't care. We don't care. But hang on, but Australia does, doesn't it? No, now, mate. I, I, all right, I've gone the whole week. Talking, we talk footy, we talk racing, we talk all sorts of things. We talk mowing lawns, we talk hats, we talk anything that interests blokes. No mention of the Women's World Cup, okay? Couldn't give a stuff. Could not give us. Is a bit. Oh, hold on. Have I offended somebody over there? I oh, know you've offended five not. million. Not only that, but you defended the mass media here. I'm not joking. You, you yeah, look at you look right at the on. sites here. It doesn't matter what other sport is on. Five out of six stories are about the Black Ferns and the Women's World Cup. And I fear what's going to happen this weekend because we're playing France. And do you know that when a New Zealand rugby team plays France in a World Cup, things happen? They sure do, don't they? Do you remember... 
where we start, 2007. No, I go back, go back, go back, 99. Go back, 99. 99. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Hold on. 1987. Oh, you won that one. No. Uh, That's before you started choking for 24 years. Um, Oh, see that, see. But I tell you what, in 2011, we smashed them 8-7. Absolutely buried them. yeah, but you shouldn't have really won that game. Has no. anyone ever point that out? Is it no. to take me to come on out? Listen, and point that okay. Out? Is I, it possible that your women, women all blacks, will they choke? Now, yeah, look, I, the problem is is that you know, that I see is that we haven't played a team of note. We haven't had an opponent that's really tested us, and so we just don't know. Yes, they they appear like a much better side than they got belted by France two times last year. They're obviously a lot fitter. Um, Wayne Smith's in the camp and he's brought in every single All Black that you could name who's a world champion. I mean, all of that's good, but we oh, just don't know the opponent. Right. We just and, and also, the only thing we know about France is that they played England in the opening round. They lost 13-7 and that should be enough of a warning. Bloody eyes. Did you see that English? I, I am going to say that English women's forward pack, yeah. they're bigger than the Wallaby forward pack. Yeah, they're massive, they're incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and this is a, in this country, because the mass media is such a gush fest about this, there's no qualitative mm. analysis of any of this stuff. It's just basically if you say anything against the black ferns, well, you're a misogynist and you're a sexist pig and you're a woman hater. Your weekend, though, hopefully is back on the island. Uh, no, got to uh, go to a mate's birthday party, so we've got to stay home in Brisbane. Oh, I'm going out to the bush for a mate's party, so I'm getting ready to do the goes now. Okay, so hang on. So, so what? You, what you do, you drive, you drive three hours out out west. So yeah, I live on the on the crust of Australia. Got to drive three hours inland and drink beer for two days, and then drive home. That's me weekend. Now, who is this? So what? What? What's this mate's name? Well, his mate's name's Jeff. Yeah, but he's the bloke who convinced me that at the age of my late fifties, I needed to buy into a race, with some race horses. That's the sort of mate he is. What a we great haven't seen man. any money yet. We've seen money <laughs> exit the account. I haven't seen any. Money. How good's horse racing? 